Okay, so we continue to talk about Young and Beautiful, this is not me as you can see, and about how to actually move from this to that. And as it's early morning still, uh, I will waste six minutes to show you a video uh, which was done uh, by our global colleagues from Manpower. You know Manpower is a global company presented in 83 countries for the moment. And as Ernie said, um, we do recruitment permanent and uh, temporary uh, staffing for uh, mostly private companies, some public uh, and governmental sectors, and uh, Australian Army. So our uh, global guys developed this one, and I believe it would be interesting for you just to see how the world of work is changing recently. It is amazing what can happen in a decade. In the last 10 years, globally, more than 500 million people entered the middle class. More than a billion people became internet users. And more than 4 billion people became cell phone users. The world is more connected than ever before. And the pace of change is accelerating. What lies ahead? What can we predict for the next 10 years? And a few things we know for sure. There will be generational change as populations become older in many countries. There will be economic change as China, India, and other developing countries continue to grow. And there will be technological change as things get smarter, faster, and cheaper. These changes are all converging in the workplace, disrupting the world of work as we know it. Over the next decade, you will be profoundly affected whether you are a worker, employer, policymaker, or leader. How will you navigate the changes that lie ahead? What will be your strategy to win? In the recent global recession, more than 25 million people lost their jobs. Unemployment was at a record high. Yet a third of employers had a difficult time finding qualified talent. With so many people out of work, how could this be? The people available did not have the talent that was needed. There was a mismatch between the talent offered and the talent required. In the past, we could expect this problem to fix itself. The economy would recover. Workers would get retrained. And new graduates would go to where the jobs are. But this time is different. In many countries, there aren't as many workers coming into the workforce as there are retiring. In addition, the jobs of today require different skills than before. Employers are looking for highly specialized skills that enable their companies to do more with less and meet the ever-rising expectations of consumers. The talent mismatch is not going to go away. In the coming decade, employers will compete for talent as aggressively as workers compete for jobs. Employers and workers will each look across the increasingly virtual table and ask, will you choose me? Thanks to the internet, a world of information is now at our fingertips. Our technology enables us to be connected around the clock and around the world. We can work from anywhere, at any time. Technology has always driven disruptive change in the world of work. In the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution moved work to the factory. In the 20th century, the Informational Revolution moved work to the office. In the 21st century, we are seeing a virtual revolution as work moves to the Internet. Over the next decade, the line between work and life will continue to blur. Work will become more collaborative and learning more continuous. Workers will be responsible for managing their own careers, developing their own skills, seizing their own opportunities. Employers will need to embrace new ways of getting things done, creating more flexible organizations, and managing workers living and working anywhere in the world. Ten years ago, there were no Blackberries, no iPhones, and no Facebook. What does the virtual revolution have in store for us next? Every generation has its own expectations and motivations about work. These expectations shape how they work and the choices they make. Baby boomers are more idealistic and loyal to their company. Gen X are more pragmatic and loyal to their career. Gen Y are more spontaneous 
and loyal to their purpose. Over the next decade, each generation will move on to the next phase in their careers. By 2020, baby boomers will be rewriting retirement. Gen X will be replacing the boomers as leaders, but with a different outlook on leadership. Gen Y will be the new generation of workers, but in relatively short supply. And a new generation will be entering the workforce with a different set of expectations and motivations. How will these generations learn to work together? How will work practices change as a result? How will a new generation of leaders manage a new generation of workers? There is no crystal ball when it comes to predicting the future of work. But some things we can count on. There will be a talent mismatch between jobs and workers. Work will be increasingly virtual and collaborative. And there will be a new generation of leaders and workers. Over the next decade, talent will become the critical source of competitive advantage. For individuals who need the right skills to get ahead. For companies who need the best people to succeed. For countries who need an educated workforce to grow. What does this mean for you? As a worker, think carefully about your options and the choices you make. As an employer, think strategically about where to find or develop the talent you need to compete. As a citizen and policymaker, support policies that enable your country to compete in a global marketplace for talent. The world of work will change in the coming decade, affecting our organization structures, our work practices, and our individual mindsets. But those who embrace and take advantage of these changes will succeed. What will you do? How will you win in this new world of work? I dare to, to waste these six minutes of your time because sometimes we really forget that we live in a global world. We talk EU. We talk Eastern Europe, Western Europe, some policy here and there, but actually uh, the workforce mobility is very, very obvious. Uh, and we have people coming from India and Pakistan to Western Europe, from uh, Northern Africa to our countries, uh, from uh, Ukraine and um, uh, Macedonia to Bulgaria. So it's really outside EU and the, the the mismatch uh, of the skill uh, is really obvious. Uh, you, you know, we are like on the labor market, company like ours, and Judy will tell you later, uh, we serve as a counter on the market between demand and supply. And what demand wants? Young, energetic, clever, bright people. What is the supply? Young, energetic, clever, young people. So there's something wrong between really meeting um, the, the demand and the, uh, the supply. Uh, so th there is a Gordian knot. Everybody wants like the same, everybody offers like the same, and they will never meet their uh, expectation. Yes, young people are different, but at the very same moment that we are talking now, in the EU, there are around two million jobs opened today. And there are the same number of people without jobs. In UK, this is uh, the data from last year. There was a conference on um, recruitment services in UK. And my colleague said that this is the sharpest rate of, vac of vacancy since uh, the beginning of the crisis. And the candidate availability is not there. A and we are talking about opening labor markets for, for non-EU people. At the same time, we are fighting to, to get uh, jobs to, uh, to, to our young people. So, how do we sell our talent and what we do uh, in order to get these talents recognized? Because the, the main issue uh, is that young people just don't know how to sell, how to market their skills and abilities. They don't know very basic things like, please write your CV without spelling mistakes. Yes, but, but it's true. And, and there's no HR on earth who will really take a, a serious look on your CV if uh, they are spelling mistakes. Uh, 
And please don't put a picture from your, from your birthday party on your CV. It should look professional. Uh, or different funny emails. Like, I don't know, I cannot tell in English, but at least in Bulgaria, they... they bunny. Yeah, honey bunny, whatever um, uh, emails that they, they have. So basically, we talk about young people of today being different and not knowing how to really uh, benefit from uh, this difference. At the same moment, uh, employers are a little bit more conservative. They still live in 20th century, some of them, most of them. And they still um, use the, the old practices of uh, recruitment and uh, selection. They want to have a CV check, then to have, let's say, skill test, then first interview, second interview, third interview. And young people, they are getting bored of, of this recruitment process that could last, let's say, two, three months. They are not ready to wait three months for a job. There are some myths in the world of work that are still here, but are not um, that up to date. Uh, and um, my parents' generation, they have a lifetime job. You start as an accountant in one company, and you retire in the same company after 40 years. Yeah, uh, Career development could be horizontal. It's not necessary to be uh, a climbing of stairs. And this is something that everybody should know by now, because the world is flat. The world of work, work is flat. With all this um, outsourcing uh, uh, of um, activities uh, and all the globalization, there is no nothing like, you know, this year I start, in two years I'm a small manager, in five years I'm a big manager, and in ten years I'm a global director. It's not going to work this way. Yes, I can start now, and in two years I might get, let's say, additional job on the same level. Then in five years I might get, let's say, a regional job, and I will be responsible for two, three countries, but it will be on the same um, level of the of the steps. Then success, what is success? Success normally is something uh, like related very much to, to the money I got, but not now. We were talking yesterday with Judy that actually none of the motivators that sh she made the research was actually money. So success means that I should feel happy on the work. I might be a packaging worker in a s store, in a warehouse, and I would be happy. Nine to five job will simply disappear very soon because, not because the business will change that faster, but because our children, they would like to have more flexible hours to work. They will be morning persons and night persons, yeah, owls and, and stuff like this. A and they will adjust, and still we have signs, for example, a at least in these sectors that are um, allowed by the, the nature of the work, uh, to be a little bit uh, flexible. For example, if you uh, write projects for an NGO and you are a night person, who cares if you do the writing at 2 o'clock in the night? Let the writing be done properly. And then the last thing which reaches EU recently uh, is that doing a mistake is great because you can learn from the mistakes. We talked with Petra last night. That, uh, okay, the movie is American, obviously. You saw it with all these, uh, you know, uh, Americans. B but yes, in the States, making a mistake is okay. Here, making a mistake is equal to, to a crime. So what, what we do? Uh, since 2010, uh, we in Bulgaria, uh, started to, to offer uh, some trainings uh, on improving employability skills of young people. Motivational trainings, trainings on how to prepare your documentation, how to uh, prepare yourself for uh, the interview, uh, 
some trainings on communication skills, on let's say personal presentation, on improving personal presentation skills. And we trained about 1,200 uh, uh, young people under the different programs, either private or governmental. We also tried to, to introduce uh, training on uh, improving uh, entrepreneurship skills, uh, but the response was not um, what we expected, so uh, we stopped this. And, and we decided at least Bulgarian uh, youngsters, they're not really keen on starting their own business or thinking about their own business at the, the, this stage of their lives. Uh, so we postponed it for, for next year. Uh, uh, what happened? Because under the governmental programs, when you use uh, government money or EU money, you have to reach a KPI. Uh, and uh, our KPI was to, to have at least 20% of these 1,200 people on jobs. So we got 33. Of course, we are manpower. We can place them whenever we want. But they should want to be placed. Because none of these young people wanted to start in a warehouse as a worker, in a factory, no matter with factory, uh, in something that is not an office and a computer. Everybody wanted a desk and a computer, no matter what education, what qualification, what skills. So we succeeded to place 33% and we continue to, to promote the, the active work because the, the activity is just the, the key point. In order to stay, not like Garfield in my first slide, you should be active, you should um, really try to, to get the job. Uh, there is a um, Bulgarian phenomenon, I call it um, mama phenomenon. Uh, the last 15 years, a lot of Bulgarian ladies migrated to Spain or Greece or Italy to take care about the, the, um, the old people there. And the children who were born in uh, late 80s and early 90s just, uh, uh, were left uh, in Bulgaria with their grandparents. And what, what is the story? Mama is sending back home every month 300 euro, which is enough for a Bulgarian young person to live very well, without doing nothing. And since Mama is really sponsoring the event, why should I bother? They don't even bother to go to register to the labor office because they don't feel themselves unemployed. This is a huge percentage of the people. And for the moment, as I told you, uh, the employers really look for young people uh, Bulgaria is becoming a top outsourcing destination and the language speaking people are wanted like hell. And for, for the this year, 2013 and 2014, there is a demand of about 2,000 foreign language speakers in Bulgaria, preferably young. Because these multinational co corporations that are our clients, they want young people there. We succeed of finding about 20%. So, the demand is here. The point is that young people, they just don't bother to get out of the bed for, let's say, 300 euro. And they never start. And it's a vicious circle. So now, if you know somebody who speaks French, I need 400 French speakers for Monday. So, if you know somebody ready to relocate for, yeah. Okay, Judy will talk about this later. Okay, we talk about this later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, basically what, what is another problem is uh, the mobility and the adaptiveness to change. Because, for example, in Europe, there are young unemployed people. We heard from uh, Ramon in Spain, uh, the same is in Greece. Uh, except Germany, everything else is like the same. But they just don't pack their luggage and then don't come to Bulgaria because they never check vacancies for Bulgaria, for example. They never check URS. And what will happen if you're at the age of 21 and you pack your stuff and you come for two years in Bulgaria? Yeah, the salary might be lower, but the standard is lower. As I say, I mean, 
it's a cheap life. One beer, one euro, great. The, 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 the rent of the apartment is much cheaper than in, uh, in all the countries. So why don't you take the adventure and come? And we do some job fairs in different countries. We did last October in, in Brussels. And luckily we have some people uh, from Holland coming and they really like it and they stay, they bring in their friends, but they speak only Dutch. And for my French, there's nothing. So if you know somebody speaking French who already come <laughs> to come to Bulgaria, <laughs> you just met them. So, yes, <coughs> they should be active and they should know how to really uh, present their skills. Because if you're with university degree, uh, and yes, we know university degree is simply just a, a requisite of the CV because everybody is with university degree, especially uh, bachelor degree. Then after this, you should be ready to show more uh, and to, to show combination of skills. Manpower is doing a lot of um, research on the global level regarding uh, youth unemployment. So in this link, I just put it for your information. If some of you are uh, interested, you can uh, uh, check uh, the, the youth papers of uh, Manpower. And what else is very valuable for young people is the, the experiences they got uh, when they work, so-called uh, black jobs. In Bulgaria, we call it black jobs. Uh, they never put their babysitting job in their CV. Because what do the employer do if they say that I'm a babysitter? Yes, they will do that. You can manage problems. Then you can multitask. Then you can, especially if you're a babysitter in another country, that you can manage different <laughs> culture and stuff like this. Really? I never knew it. Then I should put it. For example, oh, what do they know for me if I'm a shop assistant? They know that you are a problem solver, you can do with different uh, types of clients and this and this and that. And this is what we try really to, <coughs> to teach them on how exactly to present their skills and abilities, preferably in non-Euro Pass format. Because everybody hates Euro Pass format. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I'm offending somebody. So, and the benefits they got from these um, small jobs should be really uh, their, you know, selling points. I have the experience, I'm not lazy, I'm not waiting for mama to send this money, I try to manage it myself. So, being active, I, I repeat it, but, but I'm really uh, getting angry with that when I'm talking about youth unemployment because I know the demand. And uh, the point is that without actually looking for internship, for apprenticeship programs, uh, for let's say uh, some counseling and guidance from job centers and career centers, and just sit and wait, it, it, it doesn't help. Uh, some of people, uh, especially young, they would never start a, temp uh, start a temporary job. Uh, but a temporary job is something that, that could lead you to a permanent job because sometimes companies just don't have headcount for permanent uh, positions. But if you prove you're good, this is the best uh, way they select their permanent people. They just put it on a temporary assignment for um, a few weeks or a few months. So every possible opportunity should be explored. The challenge for all the governments and all of us how to create jobs for young people. And I'm not gonna read it, but uh, it's something that uh, it's on uh, the EU level that uh, our policy makers uh, really pointed a few weeks ago on their youth employment strategy, is that they should try to, to help businesses to, to create more jobs and to be uh, open towards uh, young people. And of course this uh, youth unemployment problem will simply disappear very soon by itself because there will be no working force except the people who are young now because the, the, all the rest will uh, retire or if we should open our market to, to Indians or to Chinese or I don't know to whom because anyone should produce, uh, any business uh, should produce the products and business exists to make money, so they would need a working force. So this is from, from me.